court wrapping up for the day. This is a half day in that case. I'm Paula Eben. The day began with the defense trying to discredit one of the prosecution's witnesses. Uh, the hearing began with Caitlin Albert back on the stand. Now, she is the daughter of Brian Albert, who owned the property at 34 Fairview Road when O'Keefe's body was found back in January 2021. During cross-examination, the defense asked Albert about her friendship with a first responder. The defense is accusing that person of perjury. Katie McLaughlin's in your kitchen. Correct. Yes. Uh, who invited Katie that day? Um, the two mutual friends that I lived with. Okay. Uh, certainly, you didn't invite Katie, correct? I did not. Because you're not close friends with her at all, correct? I am not. You guys were teammates on the track of cross country team back in high school, correct? I don't recall that, actually. I, we could have been. I, I'm not sure. Having reviewed those two pages, does that refresh your memory about your teammate, Katie McLaughlin? Yes, it does. And you certainly were teammates in high school, correct? Yes. Now, the defense also questioned Albert about whether she heard or saw anything unusual outside the home on Fairview Road when her boyfriend picked her up at about 1.45 a.m. on January 29th. Two hours. Uh, you never saw anyone pull up outside, correct? I personally did not. No. And you personally did not look out the window either, correct? No, I did not. And you personally never heard anything out of the ordinary outside, correct? That is correct. Right. You never heard any yelling, correct? That is correct. No screaming? Correct. Nothing smashing into anything else? Correct. No revving of tires? Correct. No noises outside? Correct. Nothing attracted your attention? Correct. You never saw any vehicle backup lights? Correct. You never saw any red lights outside? Correct. We also heard from Caitlin Albert's boyfriend and two other friends of the family. One testified that she saw a, quote, black blob in front of the house while driving away. As you drive by uh, home, uh, what, if anything, did you observe? Um, I did notice um, behind Sarah and Jen, um, I did notice a, like a something out of the ordinary, um, like a black blob um, in the ground by the flagpole. Um, it was pretty dark out, but the snow was kind of heavy at that point, so couldn't really see too much, but. So the snow's coming down at that point? Yes. And all right, let's bring in WBZ Chief I Team Investigator Cheryl Fiendaka to talk more about today's testimony. In your experience as an attorney watching this, the cross-examination was, was definitely a little more intense today. For sure. I mean, at this point, you have all of these people who are testifying about what they saw and heard that night. Some of the witnesses, as you, as you saw there, saying they saw nothing, they heard nothing out of the ordinary, never saw a car pull up, never saw anyone there. Now, this last witness is saying as they were driving away, leaving the home, she says she saw what appeared to be a, some type of black blob. Mm -hmm. And she says she says something in the car to others that are in the vehicle with her, but no one stops, no one calls the police, no one contacts anyone at the house, and everyone goes on their way. Mm -hmm. So at this point, the defense is trying to discredit this witness and say it, she, it, she either didn't see that, what she claims she saw, or she is being untruthful about saying that she mentioned this in the car. All right. So far, we've seen the defense trying to establish that people had closer relationships than they're admitting to. That's mm -hmm. one line of cross-examination, that people should have seen things like a black blob on the lawn, even if they say they didn't. Right. Uh, have they begun to establish any kind of motive here at all or not yet? I, there hasn't been much in the way of testimony about motive. Mm. At this point, everyone appears to be, I mean, this is the prosecution's case. So the right, prosecution right, right. is setting But the, the defense scene. is definitely setting up uh, an argument that somebody else did something bad.
Oh, absolutely. I mean, part of what they're trying to prove is that a third party culprit defense is mm -hmm. what it's called. That's saying that other people or someone else or other people are responsible for this death and that she's not responsible. So they have to establish that with the with the, a lot of testimony and, and evidence and their case hasn't started yet. Mm -hmm. They're using some of these prosecution witnesses to try to show that there are some holes in the story. Right. Do you think they've been successful so far? It's been pretty intense. I mean, the, you have a very sophisticated defense team and these mm -hmm. lawyers are very, very good and they've done a lot of homework as you can see. Yeah, yeah. All right, Cheryl Fiendaka, anything else about today that stood out to you? No, I just seems, it seems like, you know, a lot of the witnesses are testifying to the same thing. We just saw this one woman say she now, someone saw something. Mm. Everyone else does not appear to have seen or heard anything. So right. it's, it's starting to get a little more interesting. Interesting. Cheryl Fiendaka, thank you so much. And so, of course, testimony is done for the day. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are half days in this case. When court resumes tomorrow, of course, we'll be streaming the the trial live right here on CBS News Boston.